Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video and another deck built around the Ancient One. This time we're trying to sacrifice a 2-mana 8-8 as early as turn 3 to Obnixilus the Adversary. Can make a casualty copy of Obnixilus with X loyalty where X is the sacrificed creature's power. So sacrificing Ancient One will result in an 8 loyalty Obnixilus. So we could immediately use the minus 7 if we'd like where target player draws 7 cards and loses 7 life. Can be a nice way to refuel as well as a way to close out the game if the opponent is low enough, especially in combination with Shieldred the Apocalypse, where the opponent loses two life for each card they draw, so using Shieldred alongside the minus seven could result in 21 damage, so that's usually enough to close out the game. Then we're still going to have a three loyalty of Nixilis as well, which can make a devil token with a minus two, dealing one to any targets when it dies, and can also start plussing to drain the opponent for two, potentially gaining two as well. And then another new addition from the Lost Caverns is going to be Souls of the Lost, which has power equal to the number of permanent cards in our graveyard and toughness equal to the number plus one. We do have to either discard a card or sacrifice a permanent when we play Souls of the Lost, but that will only help increase its power and toughness, which is not a huge drawback. And then we can also maybe sacrifice some of our early creatures, like a greedy freebooter, where we get to scry one and create a treasure token when it dies. There's annoying vermin, which can mill us for two when it enters, and when it dies, give a creature minus one minus one until end of turn so playing either of these into a turn two souls of the lost is also pretty good and of course we can also sacrifice these creatures to casualty with obnixels if we don't have our ancient one available and then a Souls of the Lost is going to get pretty big pretty quickly, since we have a few ways of milling ourselves. Besides a Vermin, we can mill four cards with the Somnophage's Adventure. Somnophage only counting creatures in all graveyards as opposed to all permanent cards, so it's usually going to be a bit smaller than our Souls of the Lost. Then there's Undead Butler, which will mill three cards when it enters, and when it dies we can exile it and return a creature from our graveyard to our hand. So that's a way to potentially access some of our key cards like Souls of the Lost Ancient One, as well as the Kalos Sellsword, which also synergizes quite well with all these large creatures as we can use the burn together adventure sacrifice a creature and deal damage equal to its power to any other target so we can sack ancient one to deal eight damage sometimes souls of the loss is going to be big enough to just close out the game outright with the adventure and then soul sword can also be a creature that we can maybe sacrifice to casualty on obnixilus and then to further fill the graveyard and synergize with our souls of the lost and somnophage we're also playing two copies of jace the perfected mind can be played for three mana and two life or we can get the full loyalty version at four mana where we get to mill three times x cards using the minus x ability so that can also add 15 cards to our graveyard growing souls of the lost by 15 since every card in our deck is a permanent including some of our removal like dead weight giving a creature minus two minus two can be effective early on and of course still counts as a permanent for our souls of the lost and then a shield root remains an individually powerful card in standard that can slowly drain the opponent to death so we don't necessarily need to attack with our creatures and run into a wandering emperor to close out a game sometimes using shield roots of nixilis and eventually cell sword is good enough and then ancient one can also at some point start attacking and blocking as an 8-8 creature since we're pretty good at milling ourselves and enabling descent 8 since every card in our deck is a permanent and then our mana base also got a nice upgrade with a restless reef turning into a 4-4 creature with death touch that that mills four cards when it attacks so we can target ourselves or occasionally we can also try to mill the opponent out with reef jace and somnophage but usually we're interested in filling the graveyard instead and then we've got more dual lands and tri lands with a xander's lounge to fix our mana and the abandoned mire also pretty good here as it can mill more cards and maybe get back a creature or planeswalker so that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw we've got ancient one into obnixilus so sign me up against a green deck. Turn one Wormlet. So it might be a blue-green artifact deck. Yeah, there we see the tabbed vine stock. So we will have to watch out for counter spells. For now, play Ancient One. And if our opponent taps out or doesn't have double blue, we can safely Set up a casualtied Obnixilus. That seems good. Now the question is what to do with Obnixilus. We've got a lot of options. Could ultimate myself to draw seven. I think for now I just like making a couple devil tokens to kind of protect Obnixilus. And then next turn we can 
deploy a few more creatures and then maybe try and set up an ultimate afterwards. Siren makes a map, grows wormlets. And both going at uh, one loyalty of Nixilis. So double block one each isn't bad since we can finish off Tough Cookie and finish off Siren. Get to untap, find another ancient one. So one creature in graveyard at the moment. Opponent likely keeping up a counter spell. So kinda still want to keep plussing Obnixilus. Can play Freebooter as a blocker. As opposed to Somnophage. Play Somnophage if it gets countered would be a little bit unfortunate, since then Wormlet can finish off Obnixilus. Also have to worry about the creature land at some point. So there's a lot of possibilities here. Could also make a token with Obnixilus, but I kind of want to try and set up an ultimate now. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. <laughs> so I can play Freebooter. Probably more important to resolve than Somnophage, but... Now we'll just play this as a creature. And I'm sure they'll be happy to counter it now. So we can potentially clear a path for a uh, shield root if that shows up. Opponent could still have a glyph to animate one of their artifacts into a 5-4 and prevent an ultimate that way. Alright, opponent's exploring. Finds a siren. And uh, yeah, I think we're still happy to chump. Could be that they've got another protocol in hand. Don't need land. We're about to draw seven, so we'll see a lot of lands. Souls of Lost isn't bad either. <laughs> and we might find another of Nixilis soon to try and set up another combo. There's a Jace as well, so we just want to play some cheap threats. So Freebooter, Souls discarding a land, Souls discarding a land is an option. And then Jace milling ourselves can grow Souls quite a bit next turn. So there's another Disruption Protocol. I'll keep my treasure for now. Could discard Restless Reef, could still come in handy later. So next turn if the plan is a Jace, mill myself. Can still play Vermin or Somnophage if we use a treasure. Yeah, let's ditch the river. And pass it back for now. Sentinel's next. So if we find a cell sword now, we could maybe set up a lethal by milling with Jace and then sacking the souls. Shieldred would still be great. Can chump the wormlet since it has death touch. Don't need another freebooter. Ancient one also close to being active. So let's see here. Do we want to mill ourselves with Jace now that we only have the one souls? I guess we would still have a huge Somnophage. So that may be worth it. I wish I could sacrifice Vermin to take out the Siren, but that's not going to happen. Let's make uh, the opponent lose two more life so Nixilus doesn't die to the Siren attack. Me, and, lose and then Jace. Could also just do a minus three so it doesn't die to the siren. Lose. 
Still mill nine cards. This goes up to 16 power. So if I attack, our opponent's likely still chumping. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, we'll attack maybe after playing Vermin, so it's a guaranteed lethal, so they have to chump. So this is where having a Cell Sword would have been nice. And then we can still play an Ancient One or Somnophage, which is a bit larger. Okay, and then a tapped reef. So Cell Sword is lethal. Another of Nixles is great. Another Shielder is very good. We've got some good top decks left. I see two Cell Swords in the graveyard. Now we can also start drawing with uh, Jace, potentially drawing three cards with a minus two. Put now back up to 19. But they don't have any amazing attacks. Our opponent's still going to offer the trade here. If they attack with both, I'll chump and eat uh, Sentinel. If they just send Wormlet, I'm not opposed to trading for Somnophage. Could then also use Jace to shrink down Wormlet so we can attack past it and kind of ignore Death Touch. And they're shielded now. Okay, so play Shield Root first, and then we can draw with Jace. Gaining more life. In time, all will witness. I know where to find, all find another Shield Roots, another Souls. So don't necessarily want to trade for Wormlet here. Can uh, keep plussing up Nixilis. Play another Souls. Go ahead. Plead for mercy. Discarding a land. And then it's just a matter of time until we can reach ultimate with Nixilis again. Or just produce enough large attackers to hit the opponents for lethal. And if we draw a Cell Sword in the meantime, that can also do it. Two left and 22 cards. Ancient One can also start drawing. Ginger Brute's a way to pressure Obnixilus, although without an extra plus one counter it could die to a Vermin. Another Ancient One. Okay, so let's say we attack with the three large creatures. Then our opponent will trade for double souls and have to chump Somnophage. That leaves us in a pretty good spot. Could also first uh, play Ancient One, activate it, and if we draw into a Cell Sword, it's game over. I'll discard a land for now, I guess. Okay, could also attack with Shieldred since we have a backup. Trades for Sentinel. Could see them crew the Schooner to jump with that as well. So maybe instead of activating Ancient One, should have attacked first, see if they trade, and then play backup Shielded. Either way, I don't think we can lose this game. And then I could still make a Devil Token or keep plussing. My coin or carnage. Another Sentinel. That's going to be on Chumblock duty. Two turns away from ultimating Omnixilus again. This time with a shielded in play, we can target the opponent as well. And Deadweight doesn't do much. 
can also animate Restless Reef if we'd like. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. So, Trump take eight. Play Shielder and Pass. And that should be the final nail here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's reasonable against aggro with lots of early blockers and sellsword. Can maybe even set up a turn 3 shielded. I guess control it's not going to be quite as exciting. And Field of Ruin does point towards control. Mill ourselves for two. Next turn we can Casualty and Obnixilis. But we'll attack first. And do we want to land? Not really. Pwn can maybe counter one of the two. Negate. Still have our token copy. Does have less loyalty, but at least if we play another of Nixilis now, it's not going to go away. Instead of playing Shield Roots, I guess now that we drew another one, I don't mind as much. We could have gone for another of Nixilis with Casualty. <laughs> Your punishment is my and then this either gets countered, removed, or next turn our opponent casts a board wipe. Memory Deluge to go digging, so expecting a Sunfall next turn after opponent takes two more from Shieldred. So they'll be at 10, have a 2 2 Incubator token. And then. I could make a token with Omnixilis to set up casualty on the next one, or we can just replay another Shieldred. Yep, so that all happens. I just play shielded here. Then next turn we can set up the casualty on Omnixilis again. Maybe using the cell sword. Seems fine. Another sunfall was to be expected. Our opponent's probably at a point where they start discarding cards. Nope, still takes two. So I can play Cell Sword and then sack it to Casualty. We are on empty, so. Do need a good top deck here to close it out. Opponent falls to four, maybe they've got some life gain in hand. By making a devil we at least force them to commit pretty heavily on the incubators to take out some of our planeswalkers. So we'll protect two loyalty of Nixilis. Put our opponent to three. Ah, why that smug also reasonable to try and take out the incubator here. And our opponent's gonna get lost to destroy your planeswalker after all. Isn't a 
Okay, Souls of the Lost now is pretty large. So start by plussing. By coin or carnage. And we can sacrifice a treasure token and then explore twice. Another of Nixilus seems pretty good here if Souls survives. And if it doesn't, we can maybe still make a Devil token. If they just have more spot removal, that would be bad. Get to untap. Don't want to attack into Wandering Emperor. Start by probably making a Devil token. It's kind of close with Devil token or plus. Maybe plus is still fine. And then now we could have Nixilus with casualty sacking the souls. And then an ultimate would be game over. Opponent could have a counter spell for the higher loyalty one. Then what happens? I can still make a devil token. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. They did discard a negate earlier. They could have another one. They don't. So now we can just minus seven. Opponent loses seven. And I think that'll get the job done. Could also draw seven ourselves, of course. Opponent casting a deluge here is not going to save them. So their last cards definitely include a Wandering Emperor, at least. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's just missing an Obnixilus, pretty much. I'll keep. Turn one Phoenix Shake, so up against a red aggro. Alright, so now with the Dark Slick Shores, can play Freebooter. Turn two. Not quite sure yet. Ancient one doesn't block, and Summon of Phage is going to be quite small starting out. So I might mill myself for four. Not going to jump with Freebooter quite yet. Maybe next turn to set up turn 3 Shielded. Deadweight is an excellent draw. So now we can just Deadweight the uh, Scoundrel and play Tapland. Don't think I bother attacking for one. If our opponent plays Godric, I'm happy to jump block. It's going to be a Swiss Spear. And another Scoundrel. I will jump block now so we can play Shieldred next turn and hopefully they can't easily remove it. Don't think we need another land afterwards. Opponent might have a Lightning Strike play with fire to deal 5 damage here, which could answer Shieldred's. Their opponent loses two. Still expecting an all-out attack. And wow, Twisted Fealty stealing Shieldred. Yeah, that's gotta be game over. And a Monstrous Rage. Well, that's uh, one way to go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's not that exciting. It's good against low toughness creatures with Cell Sword maybe sacking the vermin. So we could still make something happen. We're now play tapped lounge. And then we're happy to draw Nixilis. Ancient one could be good with a Cell Sword. And Souls of the Lost as well. Alright, there's a Souls. Could already play it on turn two in case we're afraid of a counter spell. Or we can just go Vermin Tapped Land. Yeah, let's just get the vermin out there. Can mill two and then next turn maybe sack it to the souls. So we put a few more permanents in the graveyard. Put in blue-black. Was unlikely for them to be mono-blue if Soaring City was their first play. Alright, so Schooner pointing towards more creatures coming up. 
Second place souls sacking vermin after hitting for one. And that's already going to be pretty large. Could also discard a cell sword, but uh, we'll keep those around for later. So Schooner can still attack past uh, souls, just to explore with the creature they played. Next turn, play Shieldred. Opponent with a second Soaring City, that's a little awkward. But they can now play Lord Skitter. Exiling our graveyard is also very effective in this matchup, so yeah, Lord Skitter is actually quite the problem. Now Soul's only a 2-3, so can't block anymore. And we found Obnixilis. So we're just missing Ancient One now. Not expecting Shielder to survive against Blue Black. I guess it's even Esper. Could be Esper Legends. If they're playing two Soaring Cities. And there's Rafine, so a Legends confirmed. Well, we just need to find an ancient one here to set up the Wombo Combo with Shieldred and Omnixilis. Our graveyard is getting pillaged. Schooner does not have a good attack here. Their opponents might be planning to connive with her fiend and grow Schooner twice. Alright, so we do get to drain with Shieldred at least. And then we'll block the rats. Another Souls of the Lost, not exactly what we were hoping for. So, can uh, play up Nixilis sacking the souls we have out to start draining the opponent some more. Shieldred does have a good attack. So we can turn it into a bit of a race. I doubt our opponent's chum blocking here. And then we can maybe use Cell Sword to close out the game next turn. Opponent discarding our tie sort of implies they have another one in hand to destroy Shieldred, but they will lose two more life first. But yeah, without Shieldred, our chances are not looking all that great. If they have to draw with Rafine in order to find a land, they'll take some more damage at least. Cut down the token. So they can easily take out my Planeswalkers now. Schooner is crude. They could have more channel lanes, I guess, to interact with Shieldred. The blue one to bounce. Although, would mean they drew three of them. Yeah, opponent has to be careful with the Kanaya from Rafine here. It's not optional. But they will go after Obnixilis. Good old Shieldred, carrying this game by herself. Get lost is an answer to Shieldred. 
Your opponent's going to draw into it. A lose for life. And then, uh, yeah, the plan is to close out the game with our burn together. Shield her down. So Souls is now big enough to fling it at the opponent to win the game. Or we could play another shield it, but then upkeep shenanigans could still lose us the game. So sack a permanence. Could also sack a land or discard a card to make it even bigger. But this will do. Yeah, the early Lord Skitter was pretty annoying. But Shieldred did a lot of work. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Can sank vermin to the souls potentially if it means taking out a one toughness creature. And now triple Benixilis. So mill ourselves, try and grow our souls. Up the beanstalks, our opponent kind of an Iamson control deck. All right, that's going to be tough. Play souls, discarding a land, perhaps. Could also discard one of Nixilis, since we have three of them. Alright, so we'll start by attacking, and then Obnixilis with casualties next. Sank Vermin for now. Make a token and start draining. Opponent's going to gain some life here. So it's going to be a lengthy process to burn them out. Aaron Crag into another up the beanstalk. So can certainly expect a sweeper next turn. So I don't think I would want to play Shieldred even if I had the option. So instead play the butler. Can grow the souls a bit more. Opponent's gonna start discarding. And then we can follow up their sweeper with shieldreds. And still have Obnixilis draining them. Sunfall sadly exiles our creatures, so we don't get to add more permanence to the graveyard. Or trigger the Devil token. Ancient 1 plus Obnixilis is another nice combo we've got rolled up. So yeah, for now, we can make a Devil, which can be a blocker for their Incubator. If we get them to 7 life, then Obnixilis ultimate is lethal. Now Shieldreds, and then if we draw a fifth land, we could Ancient One, Obnixilis, and immediately Ultimate. Edict takes care of our only non-token creature, so very nice answer to Shieldred. Incubator animates. And they've got another removal spell, it seems. March. Well, if... Uh, we draw an untapped land, we can still win the game, and there's not much the opponent can do to interact. There we go. So start by plussing. Our opponent's not going to have priority to destroy Ancient One before I sacrifice it to Casualty. And for two mana, I don't think they can gain life at instant speed. So draw seven. Finally, a new 
It would have been even nicer with the shielded in play, but uh, still going to be good enough. Opponent wanted to draw a lot of cards, and uh, we obliged on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn 1 can play Vermin, turn 2 maybe even sacrifice it to souls if our opponent presents a 1-toughness creature. Opponent black-red. So, yeah, I think we'll just mill with Somnophage then. Make Somnophage and souls larger. Against Black Red, we can of course expect removal like Gopher Throat that can ignore how large our creature is, but can maybe dodge a few burn spells that way. So hit for one, play Somnophage first, maybe. Which they might already go for the throat. And then we've got some more heavy hitters coming up with Shieldroot and Souls. Hoping to find an Obnixilus. One's it's going to cut down to likely set up a Shieldroot's Edict. Or a Liliana. Yep. So keeping the vermin around actually proved to be useful. Alright, let's see how many more removal spells we'll run into. Upkeep, removal on Shieldroot it seems, go for the throat. Yeah, this seems like a tough matchup, unless we can find our Obnixilus soon. Another Souls helps. Play a pair of those. And that's uh, Threatening Lethal. Opponent at 18. Celestus doesn't do it. So our opponent seems very dead. Even have a Cell Sword now to deal another 11 damage. Well, that ended up working out quite nicely. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand could use a bit of help off the top. But it's decent against aggro, at least, with uh, early removal spells. Sacking Vermin with a Cell Sword can essentially deal 2 damage, or, well, 1 damage and an extra minus 1, minus 1. Souls can also sack the Vermin on turn 2 if a 1 toughness creature shows up. And then that way there's more removal. So just need something along the lines of Shield Roots or Obnixilus. Even an Ancient One can probably start attacking pretty soon, as we can mill a few cards and put more in the Graveyard. For now, play Vermin. Milled Ancient One and a land. Okay. Opponent on a white deck. And a Warden's next. Good target for Deadweight. Could also attack first, and then basically trade if they block the Vermin. And if they do, could either play Souls or Cell Sword. Opponent accepts. So now Cell Sword would enter as a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that seems fine. Can attack and set up Obnixilus next turn, perhaps. Inti is next, so opponent on the red-white aggro. Okay, so we'll attack. I guess the only issue is Inti can grow and gain trample. So it can trample over potential 1-1 one, one tokens, so using dead weight might still be the play here. And then Souls can discard Underground River. Could also keep dead weight to answer Brutal Cathar if they try and exile my Souls of the Lost. So I could also just play Souls, discarding a land, and not play Deadweight, since this would be large enough to block Inti, so they kind of have to respond to it. Only drawback is I might not be able to play Obnixilus and Deadweight on the following turn, but that might be alright. So we'll see how this plays out. Bowen's gonna get lost instead. Okay, so now if Inti picks up a plus one counter, we can no longer deadweight it. So that didn't quite work out as intended. 
opponents just desperate to hit their land drops, I guess. Okay, so now... Could Deadweight Inti hang back with Salt Sword, hoping they don't have another two-mana removal spell or a land into Brutal Cathar. Could also attack, play Obnixilis, and then start plussing. Could also use map tokens here to try and find a land for Shieldred. So got a few options. It's not clear how to proceed. I think I will try and get Shieldred down. Did find a land, perfect. So now maybe it's still fine to attack an Obnixilis. Even though we're going to lose one of the two. Can just make a pair of devils so it doesn't feel as bad. And if they don't give a trample we can chum block. So then we'll be able to play Shieldred and still have Deadweight for a potential Brutal Cathar. Podon keeps digging for land. Inti up to a 4-4. Exiling Adlin, which they may not be able to play. So at least they're not getting the most out of the ability, which does get better as the game progresses when you've got more lands in play. Another shield roots, nice to have. So maybe one devil can attack. Punishment is my entertainment. And they need an immediate answer to shield roots, no two mana removal. A land Cathar, perhaps. Just an Adlin. Inti can attack, we can trade, play another shield roots. What do we do with the uh, human token? I guess we'll see what Inti does first, but likely giving itself a plus one counter and trample. So this is a trade without taking any trample. And then can block here, deal one upstairs. That seems fine. So this keeps plussing. Play shield roots. And then we could deadweight Adlin, so it doesn't get large enough to attack into Shieldred. Could also take out the Warden for good, but it's not really bothering me at the moment. Pass it back. Next turn we can explore. And our opponent's going to be dead pretty soon here with Obnixilus draining them as well. So yeah, a bit of an interesting game with our opponent stuck on two lanes, but it still offered some interesting decisions. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's pretty awful. This we can try to keep. And then the most conditional card might be Deadweight. Although I could also make an argument for Somnophage. If we're up against Aggro, I might want the Deadweight. And this requires a little bit of time to set up. When we might just go Freebooter, then Deadweight, and then Obnixilus. Another Deadweight, so hopefully our opponent plays couple cheap creatures. Well, they seem to be on control so far, which does not bode well for keeping dead weight in hand. And next turn we can casualty an Obnixilus. Opponent making a knight, all right, that we can dead weight. And a Steel Seraph now as well. Okay, that could be more of a problem, so we could double Deadweight Steel Seraph. Does not feel great. But flying creatures are good at pressuring Obnixilus. Could also just casualty Obnixilus, sack Freebooter, use a treasure to Deadweight the Knight. But then we will be losing Obnixilus most likely. So. Let's just deal with a Steel Seraph while we can. Uh, 
and I'll hang on to my freebooter to set up casualty. Opponent likely hanging on to Wandering Emperor here. Yeah, still gonna go for Nixilis. Do want a land to play Shieldred. Alright, no end of turn Emperor. That's good news. So we should be able to untap with at least one of Nixilis. I'll definitely make this trade. And a wedding announcement is next. That's beatable. Will be quite good in combination with Virtue of Loyalty. I guess Ossification now. Exiles one of Nixilis. But now they may not have an answer to shield it. This is the regular Obnixilus, not the token. So I'm not in a hurry to play another casualtyed Obnixilus. So next turn I might actually minus two and then set up another casualty. We will eventually need to win with a fling effect since the opponent's creatures are gonna quickly outgrow ours. So getting through on the ground is gonna be difficult. For now we can still get an attack in with Shieldred if we'd like. Cash in Obnixilis. Play Butler. Sacrifice Butler to Obnixilis. I guess we'll see what we mill first. Cell sword. That could be a way to maybe burn them out. Now Shielder is tapped, so could get exiled by an opposing Emperor. But they didn't seem to have one so far. So we can draw the cell sword here. Make another devil and keep plussing. Oh, so we still have a lot riding on shieldred to close out the game. If we find a Souls of the Lost, that can also combine with a Cell Sword to deal quite a bit of damage. And for now, the Devils could trade for the human tokens. Sunfall, that's a problem, so we lose Shieldred and our Devils. At least we still have Obnixilis. So our opponent's at 8. Summon of Age a 3-3. Three, three. So these can keep lossing. Hope to get our opponent low enough. <laughs> Pleasure doing opponent is discarding now. So they're aware that they can get too low because of Cell Sword. They do fall to 6. So if I mill two creatures, Somnophage could get the job done. We milled one creature, so this is a 5-5. Five, five. So we're one short of killing with Cell Sword. I think we wait. Opponent plays a land, which they realized is a mistake because of Obnixilis. So now we should win the game. I guess our opponent can still attack with both just to draw with announcement, so they're not dead to one Obnixilis activation. And then we can eat the token. If they just go after one Obnixilis, then they're just dead on board. Because they won't draw, I can make them lose two lives since they can't discard, and then Cell Sword is another five. Alright, sweet. Close one here against Mono White tokens. 
All right, so we got to see our Grixis and Nixilis deck in action, and the deck has some pretty nifty synergies with our Ancient One, with Cell Sword sacrificing a large Souls of the Lost. There's a bit of Mill synergy, a bit of Sacrifice synergy. So overall, pretty cool deck. Probably not quite there yet in terms of competitiveness. It's still going to lose some games where Monorad Aggro curves out. We don't have a ton of cheap spot removal, but at least against Control, we don't have too many dead cards, and having a Planeswalker like Omnixilis is also a big help. So yeah, overall can be decent in the right meta, but in a meta dominated by Monorad Aggro, I would still look elsewhere. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.